What's up guys, Joe Strada with Unleashed Strength Gym back here in an empty gym. <laughs> Sad reacts. Today we're hitting every powerlifter's favorite movement, the pull up. We're hitting pull ups today for a few different reasons. Firstly, a lot of people are at home working out, people aren't going to the gym to work out. Pull ups are such a great way to build your back, blow up your arms, hit your abs, all in one movement. All you need is something overhead, relatively straight and even that you can hold on to and pull yourself up. You can go use the monkey bars at the playground, you could use one of those door contraptions, you can use the door frame itself, you can even use a branch outside. There are a ton of cheap, easy ways to do pull-ups. That brings us to the next reason we're doing this video is because a lot of people have trouble getting down that first pull-up. And as they say, I don't know who they are, that first pull-up is always the hardest because you can't actually train the pull-up by doing the movement because the movement's too hard. So you gotta do different movements or different accessories to help build up your strength that you can eventually do the actual movement. <laughs> I have a lot of people coming to the gym saying that they have a goal of being able to do one or two or five or 10 pull-ups and they can't even do one yet, which is a great ambitious goal, very doable. And I wanna show you some ways that you can get to do that first pull-up and then how you can use that first pull-up to get to more, get to three, get to five, get to 10, get to 20 and so on. First of all, building up the lat muscles is in my opinion, one of the more difficult challenges of building upper body musculature in general. Being able to feel your lat and engage it is something that takes a lot of practice because it's so out of sight, out of mind throughout the day and we don't often think about how to do it. It's easy to flex a bicep, it's easy to even flex a pec once you have some muscle there, but building up your lat and being able to flex it and use it and engage it is something that is gonna take some practice. I like to try to pull my elbow to the side, to my side, like so, boop, which is gonna help engage my lat almost automatically. So that's one thing I wanna think about when I'm doing my pull-ups, when I'm doing any kind of pull down, vertical pulling motion, even horizontal. I'm thinking about pulling with my elbows to my side and that's gonna engage my lat. The reason we want to engage our lats in these exercises is because they're, well, some of the biggest muscles in our upper bodies. And we wanna be able to take full advantage of them by engaging them the correct way. That being said, building up your upper body musculature, especially in your lats and your biceps, is really gonna help develop the strength and the overall muscle mass to be able to do a pull-up. Conversely, any extra weight that you're carrying is just gonna make your pull-ups more difficult. So if you can lose weight in a healthy and responsible way, I definitely would advise doing so as you're trying to increase your pull-ups. So as we discussed, we're gonna to wanna to find that pull-up bar, ledge, branch, whatever it is that we're trying to pull ourselves up on so we can get started on our pull-ups. I'm gonna take a slightly wider than shoulder width grip, thumb over or under, it's kind of preference at some point. I actually prefer to do it with my thumb overhand. I feel like it's a little less pressure on my shoulder and my elbow. I feel like I have a better range of motion. Again, personally, I think it just comes down to preference. There may be some benefits one way or the other, but like I said, play with it, see which feels better. Firstly, let's talk about overhand versus underhand. I consider underhand chin-ups, I consider overhand pull-ups. At the end of the day, does it really matter? Not a huge difference. A lot of people are gonna say that chin-ups are gonna have a little more emphasis on your biceps. Do what feels comfortable for you. For the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna be doing pull-ups. Also, I wanna make sure my bar, if possible, beggars can't be choosers, if possible, when I'm hanging full extension from the bar, my feet are off the ground. Gonna get a good grip on the bar. Think about, like I said, pulling my elbow to the side of my back, engaging my lats back here, and I'm gonna think about bringing my chest to the bar. So I think about sternum up as high as it'll go. Nice controlled pull. I'm gonna go up until my chin is over the bar. I'm gonna bring it down nice and slow and have nice control over the pull-up. Now if you're trying to do a ton of pull-ups and you want to do a little bit of a rebound, you're just going for numbers at the bottom, again, at the end of the day, is it a huge deal? Probably not. The more control throughout the movement that you have without using any kind of rebound, obviously the more difficult the movement is gonna be. So there's a the pull-up, nice and easy, hits the biceps, hits the back, hits the abs, but let's talk about doing that first pull up if you're unable to actually pull yourself up unassisted. The first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is grab a couple of assistance bands, preferably ones with different degrees of strength. This one is super strong and it's gonna really help you do a pull up. This one is also still strong, but it's gonna help you a little less. Nice thing about this is you can progress from a really strong assistance to less strong assistance. And there's lots of other bands, sizes, strength that you can slowly progress with so you're getting less and less assistance over time. Progressive overload, people. To use the band, I'm just gonna loop it through itself over the bar like so. To get some assistance out of it, I'm gonna pull the band down 
put it around my knee, hang from it, and pull up. Now this hurts my leg hair a lot. Oh. <laughs> to avoid stripping all your hair off your leg, you can also use it around your foot and step through it. I would recommend having a step stool of some sort or a bench behind you so you can more easily get your foot into it. If you have longer pants on, obviously this is gonna save your leg hair and not tear them all off. So what's the band actually doing? Obviously, the farther it stretches, the more it's trying to pull back up. So at the very bottom of the movement, it's giving you the most assistance. As you go up, it's giving less and less assistance. So at the top, you're really doing most of the work. I recommend at first working with that heavy assistance, being able to really work on your groove, working on engaging your lats, doing a high number of reps, getting five, 10, even sets of 15, and really building up the endurance, building up some musculature in your back and your arms, so that you can start progressing to lighter bands. As always, I recommend keeping track of what you're doing so you can slowly improve. Three sets of 10, then the next week you do four sets of 10, then you do three sets of 12, then you do four sets of 15. You slowly improve, you slowly increase and build up that endurance, build up that strength to be able to do more and more of these pull-ups. So let's talk about some negatives now. You can do negatives in just about any sort of lift where you're trying to resist the weight coming down as slowly as possible. So in this particular instance, we're gonna try to take it to the top. For this demonstration, I'm on a very short bar, but I would recommend again is finding a bench, finding a step stool or whatever that you can hop up on so that you can be just about at chin height to the bar. The idea is that we're gonna get to the top, hold it, and we're gonna resist slowly down. You're always gonna be able to resist yourself slowly down before you can actually pull yourself up from the bottom. So this is a great way to work that range of motion from the top to the bottom, getting that time under tension, developing that strength without having to actually start from the bottom and pull yourself up by yourself. Now let's show you another cool one real quick. That again, you don't need a lot of equipment for. If you have a TRX, you have a pair of rings, you even have like a shorter bar, you can even do this on like a kitchen table or something. If you're hanging down, get right under the point where you're grabbing your rings, your TRX, whatever it is, and there's a few different variations for this. I can have my feet out in front of me. I can pull straight up. I can have one foot back here to give me a little more assistance, pull straight up. I can even have both feet back here and pull straight up. Really trying to practice engaging the lats and working through that range of motion without having to pull yourself up by yourself completely. This is similar to like an inverted row when I'm doing more of a horizontal row, but this one I'm really trying to work on a vertical pull instead, pulling straight up and engaging my lats from a vertical angle. So another great tool for pull-ups obviously is weighted pull-ups, whether it be a weighted vest, a backpack, a chain belt, anything to add to resistance to your pull-up. So obviously if you can't do a full pull-up by yourself, maybe we lay off the weights. At the same time, if you're getting good at negatives, you could always increase the weight on your negatives, make it more difficult for you to resist down, and hopefully that should translate into a stronger pull up. You can pause your pull-ups at the top. You can control the lower down. There's plenty of ways that you can make your pull-ups more difficult, even if you're not at a full pull-up yet. Throwing back to what I said about building up the musculature in your back, things like lat pull-downs, seated rows, straight arm pull-downs are all gonna build up your back muscles and the strength in your back to actually do a pull-up. So how do you program these? How many times per week? How many reps at a time? Honestly, there's a million ways that you can set up your programming and do these variations. The biggest thing that's gonna come down to is consistency. Two to three times a week, in my opinion, is gonna be a great sweet spot to really build that improvement. You're gonna have time to rest and recover between workouts, but you're also gonna be hitting pull-ups with enough frequency to see some serious progress. For something that you're really trying to improve on and focus on, I wouldn't save it till the end of your workout or till you're really tired. Maybe warm up and get your sets in early in your workout so that you're fresh, so that you can really focus and put your strength and effort and energy into those really strict and good pull-ups. I recommend anywhere between three and six sets. But like I said, just try to start somewhere and just start making progress from there. Keep track of what you're doing so that you know how to improve, you know your progress, and you can see what you did last time, you can try to figure out how to improve the next time. As far as variations go, be careful not to switch it up too, too much or at least completely randomly. Have one day where you do negatives, have one day where you do strict pull-ups, have one day where you do pauses or whatever it is, but be consistent. You don't wanna be so random and so different every workout that you're not actually seeing steady progress from workout to workout. Have a staple variation that you use as your main movement, whether it be pause chin-ups or tempo pull-ups that you can use to measure your progress and use as your main movement, and then use accessories to build up your endurance, build up your strength at your weak points in the movement. 
Don't be afraid to experiment and try new things as well. A lot of times you can find the best exercise that's gonna work for you based on your knowledge of your own body, the knowledge of your equipment that you have and at your disposal, and the way that you think you're gonna progress the best. Ultimately, stay consistent, put in the work, and you're gonna start seeing results. Be patient with it, it could take a while, it could be days, weeks, months, but like anything, make sure you're playing the long game. It's easy if you're just looking for short-term results to get discouraged when you have a bad workout day, you don't get enough sleep, or you have low energy, or you have a bad diet day, but if you're looking at the long term and it's just the one day or even a week or even a month, it's just a drop in the bucket and you know in the long term you're gonna be stronger, you're gonna be better, and you're gonna be building up your abilities and making that progress in the end. Let me know if you have any particular questions or concerns, what topic we should cover next, and ultimately I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and getting strong. Take care guys, peace.